everyone, so I wanted to do a screencast for genetics. Obviously, uh, by this point in time, you've probably figured out that genetics can actually be pretty complicated if you don't get that foundational uh, terminology and vocab down. So this first screencast is going to be devoted to practicing using that vocabulary that's going to be so important in the later sections when we do monohybrid crosses, dihybrid crosses, and when we talk about non-Mendelian genetics. So you really need to get this vocabulary down. If it helps, make flashcards for this. I'm not a big fan of flashcards, but if it helps you to learn the terms, you should do it. You should always apply these uh, vocab words and use them whenever you can so that it's natural when I say them and, and use them in class. Okay, so to start off with genetics, you really can't have a discussion of genetics, at least uh, Mendelian genetics, without talking about Gregor Mendel. Uh, that famous 19th century Austrian monk. Uh, so he, he had a, a real devotion to science. Not only did he establish the field of genetics, but he was also a devoted um, astronomer uh, and meteorologist. So he's really into physical science as well as life sciences like genetics. His model organism was a pea plant. So, uh, you know, for model organisms, you try to figure out one that works best for your situation. So he had a garden. Uh, in the back of the monastery, so using plants for his model organism just made sense, uh, even though people at the time probably were wondering why he was growing so many pea plants. So to start off with some vocabulary, you need to know what an allele is. Okay, Back when we were studying gene expression, we saw that certain portions of DNA on a chromosome uh, were genes. So if I were to draw out a chromosome here, you recall that certain bands right here, for example, uh, contain genes which went on to make proteins and proteins did certain things inside the cell. So for this gene right here, uh, you only have one of these genes per chromosome. However, some genes have what are called multiple alleles. Now an allele is a multiple version of a gene. As you'll see a little bit later, you'll see instances where we represent some alleles by capital letters and some alleles by lowercase letters. So in this case, big P is one allele or version of this gene, and lowercase p is a different allele of the gene. Now what designates the different alleles? Well, if you're going to go down to the real roots of the, of the difference, what you'd see is the different uh, genetic sequences distinguish these two alleles. So for example, AAA A might be the allele, uh, the uh, genetic code for this allele, whereas you might see AATA. So there's a change, a mutation that makes this other allele. Genotype versus phenotype. Literally, genotype is the genetic makeup of a organism. So for example, if an organism has the genotype PP, that represents something. If it has the genotype little p, little p, in which there's two little p alleles, those are two different examples of a genotype. Phenotype is the physical characteristic uh, created by this genotype. So it's the physical appearance of the organism based on its genotype. So I've highlighted some mnemonics for that geno uh, for gene pH for physical characteristics brought on by the genotype. Dominant alleles versus recessive alleles. So if you're dominant, you kind of take over, right? So for dominant alleles, these alleles, uh, whatever their phenotype is, so whatever physical characteristics they bring on, is what you see. So usually we denote this by an uppercase letter. So in the case of uh, P, this would be the, the big P. And we know that the big P stands for purple as a phenotype. So whenever you see a big P in an organism's genotype, you're going to know that that's purple. In that same example, little p is the recessive allele for flower petal color. Uh, flower petal color. So lowercase p is recessive. Therefore, the only time that you see a recessive phenotype is when both alleles are this recessive uh, allele, and therefore, in this case, you'll see white petals on a uh, on a pea plant. Homozygous versus heterozygous. Okay, now 
what I've drawn over here is a chromosome and it's only one chromosome and thus with one specific gene at this locus so we'll put L here for locus now we're diploid organisms meaning we have two sets of chromosomes so I'm gonna go ahead and draw another chromosome this being from one set this being from the other set this is chromosome number eight now we have two sets now we're diploid it's going to you're going to see the same gene at this locus over here same locus we call this gene here I'm gonna call it flower petal color so the FPC gene so literally it's the same gene there's nothing uh, there's no new gene here it's only one gene it's the flower petal color gene it's just that you see it on this chromosome and you see it on this chromosome because we're diploid now in this case if I designated uh, the chromosome 1 here as big P meaning that the gene right here has a big P and if I designated this other chromosome right here as having the the little P allele we arrive at a genotype okay so this is the organism's genotype big P little P uh, when you have a mixture of different types of alleles you get something that's called heterozygous so literally the zygote which is diploid has mixed alleles thus it's heterozygous it's a mixed zygote now if I change this and I scratched out this little p and I designated this also as big P I'd be in a homozygous situation so this would be homo which stands for same zygote so it's a zygote with the same alleles so literally the alleles are the same here big P big P whereas here they're mixed big P little p now stop this uh, screencast and go back and review the vocabulary looking at this you should be able to tell me what is dominant and recessive here you should be able to tell me the genotypes and phenotypes uh, based on this remember big P is dominant uh, and makes purple petals little p is recessive and makes white petals okay you should be able to tell me the different alleles in this example so pause that and go back um, and I will proceed okay so how did Mendel do this exactly well um, you recall from class that uh, a lot of plants including the pea plant have multiple uh, sexual structures meaning the plant here has a uh, male stamen as well as uh, female carpal so both sex organs are found on the pea plant meaning that this plant can produce pollen as well as receive pollen by the ovules or eggs that are found in that carpal so I'll just label this real quick carpal and stamen uh, this is the male portion which produces pollen this is the female portion which for lack of better word produces eggs ovules so if you want to keep this plant from essentially reproducing with itself you have to remove the stamens which this picture is showing here the scissors are cutting away the male parts so it doesn't produce pollen otherwise you'd produce purple pollen and uh, you're left with just the female part and in this case you transfer uh, pollen from a white plant to the female plant and that's cross fertilization okay uh, you are purposely taking pollen from another plant you're controlling the cross you're controlling uh, what plant one produces with so I'm gonna show you the cross sign here you want it specifically to produce reproduce with plant two so you uh, cross it to plant two by doing this cross fertilization process otherwise if you leave you leave two purple plants alone uh, they will self fertilize and all you'll get is purple plants in this particular example okay I really want you to understand the difference between characters and traits in pea plants now I'm a kind of a stickler for this detail so I'm gonna hold you to understanding the differences between these two I want you to think of characters as being broad and I want you to think of traits as being specific now for traits it becomes interchangeable with the word phenotype so uh, traits end up being the plants particular phenotype 
and uh, characters are these broad uh, categories of, um, I guess, you know, they're characteristics of plants. They're very broad, though. They don't get into the specific phenotype. So, for example, uh, you'll see up here in this first row the characters that you see in pea plants. So, uh, the, there's a character called flower color. There's a character called flower position, where it's actually found on the, on the pea plant. You'll see a character called seed color. Remember now, these are also very broad, so it's not saying anything specific about the seed color. It's saying that there is a category of, of um, appearance that's very broad, and it's, and it's called seed color, and it goes on and on. Now, if we, uh, if we look at traits, traits are specific, so going back to these specific examples, traits. So what's a trait for a seed color? Well, there's yellow and there's green, meaning in, under the category of uh, character of seed color, you can have the yellow trait or the green trait. Um, so that there's that. Over here for flower position, you can be axial, meaning that your uh, flowers are found in the middle of the plant, or you can be terminal, meaning your flowers are found at the end of the plant. So these are specific traits for the flower position character. And last but not least, flower petal color comes in purple traits and white traits. So the particular phenotype for this plant in this case is purple, and in this case is white. It's specific for a broad category of flower color. Now, keep in mind this isn't just in plants. Any sort of organism that has a genetics about it, which is pretty much everything that reproduces sexually, um, has a... Uh, Characters and traits, right? So think about it for a human. What are some human characters? Eye color comes to mind. Uh, height comes to mind. Hair color comes to mind. Skin color comes to mind. And if you're going to get into the specific traits for those, well, for example, for the human character eye color, you can have green eyes, you can have blue eyes, you can have brown eyes, you can have purple eyes, believe it or not. Uh, for height, you can be really, really tall. You can be tall. You can be uh, average. You can be below average short. You can be really, really short. Okay, so those are some examples of uh, the differences between characters and traits, and I will ask you about them. So, so don't forget what those are. Okay, so that's the beginning of the screencast. Make sure you understand that vocabulary, especially back here to Mendelin genetics, because this is really the foundation for. Um, everything that we're going to do. This is the foundational vocab. You can't have a discussion about genetics without the term allele, without genotype, phenotype, dominant, recessive, homozygous, and heterozygous. I really, really need you guys to understand that. One last thing to be very specific, and you know I like those these types of details. How many unique genes did we consider in this example? In other words, yeah, you get a gene from mom and a gene from dad. So there's two genes, but technically, to be very, very specific and technical, we're only considering one gene. We're considering the flower petal color gene. It's the gene that's found at this locus, this position on the chromosome. So it's one gene, but there are up to two different alleles for this. Now, um, there's the big P allele and there's the little p allele. And depending on whether the organism is homozygous or heterozygous, you'll find different combinations of those alleles. So don't get tricked up by that vocabulary. One gene found on two different chromosomes, but potentially several different alleles, OK? Now, make sure you practice using that vocabulary because uh, you know I'm not going to pause in future screencasts when we, we talk about these things. So make sure that you understand them before you move on, okay? I hope that helps.